Hey guys, Levelcap here, and today in gaming, Call of Duty Warzone might finally be playable again. Riot and Bungie's epic team-up is already bearing fruit, Space Legs for Elite Dangerous has been delayed, and much more. Raven Software released a major update for Warzone today that fixes the infinite stim glitch and actually nerfs the DMR-14, among other weapons. Players have been calling for this nerf for weeks. Earlier this week, Raven launched what they said was a nerf, but not only did it not do enough, it seemingly improved the DMR-14's accuracy. Mm -hmm. This new update changes the DMR-14's bullet penetration value from sniper to assault rifle. The damage falloff range has also been decreased by 70% from 2,500 units to 750 units. Before you hit that 750 units, the gun will do 55 damage per shot. After 750 units, it will do 48 damage per shot. The damage multipliers for the DMR have also been reduced. Headshots now do less than 100 damage after 750 units, and the lower torso damage is now 1.01 times down from 1.1. Now all those numbers aside, assuming that this functions as intended this time around, these changes should bring the DMI-14 down to earth as a somewhat strong semi-auto assault rifle. In its previous state, it was basically a fast-firing low-recoil semi-auto sniper rifle. Thankfully, the nerfs don't end there. The Type 63 got a similar decrease to its penetration and damage falloff ranges. The Diamante pistol's max damage was reduced by 11% from 45 to 40 per shot. When dual wielding, the Diamantes now have a flat one times damage multiplier on all areas of the body. Given their insane rate of fire, I still think that dual Diamantes will be at face melters. The blueprint that gave the MAC-10 higher than normal damage was updated so it matches the base MAC-10's damage profile. The final bit of changes concerns some attachments for the DMR and the Type 63. The front grip and field agent foregrip for the DMR both have their vertical recoil benefits reduced or outright removed and the horizontal recoil benefits increase. The same is true for the Type 63's front grip and Spetsnaz ergonomic grip. To be honest, these changes are a little concerning because vertical recoil on both guns is already very easy to control by default. Improving their horizontal recoil control will just make them a little easier to use. Overall, this is a pretty substantial update that should improve the balance in Warzone, but I think it's safe to say that you're still going to see many people using the DMR-14 for a while. In Cold War news, Treyarch are saying official ranked play is still in the works. They said Cold War would feature ranked play before the game launched, but they haven't added it or even communicated about it since then. But recently, a Treyarch dev replied on Reddit saying, yes, ranked play will be a thing. I currently don't have a timetable to share with you, however. And this is great news for players frustrated by the game's invisible skill-based matchmaking system. Having a visible rank that you can track and work on improving would be great for competitive players. We have an update for the story about Riot and Bungie teaming up against the Gator Cheats website that we published earlier this week. In response to the joint lawsuit that the two companies filed, Gator Cheats has been shut down entirely. This is a massive blow to cheaters as Gator Cheats was one of the premier hosts for Warzone, Valorant, and Destiny 2 hacks. And while there's dozens of similar cheating websites out there, shutting down Gator Cheats certainly puts the fear in everybody else. Hopefully the lawsuit results in some severe consequences. Space Sim Elite Dangerous is getting a massive expansion called Odyssey that adds space legs and full FPS combat to the game this year. Unfortunately, the expansion has been delayed. It was supposed to launch in full early access this year, but that's been pushed back to late spring. The good news is, the devs will be launching an alpha on the update in early spring to test it out ahead of launch. The devs cited the pandemic as the primary factor in their decision to delay the update. What makes Odyssey such a big deal is that Elite Dangerous is probably the closest space sim when it comes to competing with Star Citizen. Even though both games are very different, having a space legs component to Elite Dangerous will bring it one step closer. There's a lot of excitement in the Elite community for this expansion, and I think they're willing to suffer a minor delay considering they've been waiting seven years to walk among the virtual stars. Ubisoft have announced an open-world Star Wars game. This follows Disney reviving the Lucasfilm's game brand. Until recently, EA had exclusive license to produce Star Wars games. That license, however, has expired and opened up development to other studios. 
So far, we know Machine Games are making an Indiana Jones game, and now Ubisoft are in. Ubisoft's open world games often draw a mixed reaction, but it's undeniable that the phrase open world Star Wars game is practically music to everyone's ears. While EA's exclusive license has expired, they're still working on future Star Wars games. I'm sure in the coming weeks we'll be seeing many more Lucasfilm games announced from a wide variety of developers. Rainbow Six Siege Quarantine is a spin-off of Siege's Outbreak limited time event mode from 2018. While Outbreak drew a mixed reaction from players, there was a clear interest in a more fleshed out experience. Ubisoft were quick to reveal Quarantine but have been very slow to reveal more info about it. Last year, they announced that it was being delayed in response to the pandemic for, well, obvious reasons. Since then, it's been radio silence. However, the official Ubisoft website now lists Quarantine with a March 21st release date. The description says it'll be on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. It'll support three-player co-op versus a mysterious threat. Considering how keen Ubisoft have been to push next-gen support for their games, this page seems like a bit of a placeholder. If that's the case, it's a pretty big oversight by the company. Many players are eager to learn more about Quarantine, and this kind of info gives them a lot to look forward to. If it is just a placeholder though, hopefully that date listed isn't too far from reality. In a shocking move, Intel CEO Bob Swan has stepped down. He served as the company CEO for two years, overseeing Intel's fall from dominance in the consumer CPU market. While that's probably more to do with AMD coming out of nowhere with their Ryzen processors, it's also partially Intel's fault for not getting production on new architecture and processors up to speed quickly enough. Pat Gelsinger, CEO of VMware and a former veteran Intel employee, will take Swan's place as CEO. Gelsinger is well regarded in the tech industry and almost followed Steve Ballmer as Microsoft CEO back in 2013. Hopefully this change in leadership helps Intel regain a competitive foothold in the consumer hardware space. Before we get to our final story today, let us know what stories you'd like to see us cover more in future episodes. Is there a game you'd like us to report on a bit more? Let us know in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. The upcoming Harry Potter RPG Hogwarts Legacy has been delayed. It was announced during last September's big PS5 event and was initially scheduled to launch this year. It's been pushed to 2022. The game is set in the 1800s and looks like it'll offer a pretty diverse range of gameplay. Everything from magical combat to taming magical creatures was featured in the reveal trailer. While the Harry Potter brand has somewhat languished in recent years, it's undeniable that people are hyped for a good Harry Potter game. Hogwarts Legacy looks impressive based on its trailers. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.